Hey everyone, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. Well, I've got another video on the 65 Thunderbird hardtop. Uh, the other day I went out to, st to start the, uh, the, the Thunderbird, and the first time, honest to goodness, and I'll tell you for sure, for a fact, this vehicle wouldn't start. It wouldn't even kick. It's the first time ever since I have it on the road. It always was like one turn of the key and off you're going. Um, but this time it wouldn't even fire. So that led me down the road to actually getting the manual out and reading about the Permatuned transistorized system. Now I had a question uh, about a year ago on this, would I do a video on it? And I didn't because I didn't understand how it worked and I was doing a whole bunch of other stuff at the time. And I apologize to the, to the person that asked me if they would do a video. They just really wanted to know what the components were. So that's what we'll be covering here today. The components of the transistorized uh, ignition system. Here we are. Got my manual, the engine hood open. So we'll go into, we'll get into this uh, 1965 Ford Thunderbird shop manual. And you go to uh, section, well, I, it's group nine they call it in here. I end up calling it section nine, but it's group nine ignition system. Here we have a diagram of your typical conventional ignition system. It's got a battery, starter relay, coil, distributor cap, spark plug, distributor, and the ignition switch now that's pretty straightforward most of you guys already know that so now i'm going to switch this over and i'm going to slide over because on the other page i'll switch this over to the other one and we'll take a peek at what the transistorized one looks like well there it is a uh, transistor ignition system it looks somewhat different as a schematic than the conventional so what is this all this all these lines and all that stuff what do they do well that's what we're going to get into here so let's not get too much into the, the actual diagram, but we'll pick out the pieces of this. So first off, since it's on this page already, we have uh, an amplifier assembly. And that's what this piece right here is. This is an amplifier assembly. And this amplifier assembly is up under the dash on the passenger side. And we'll go in there and we'll, I'll show you that. Okay, the amplifier is up under this uh, panel right below the Thunderbird emblem on the passenger side. So you have to take this panel off to get at the screws. Well, you could probably get it without taking the panel off, but it'd be tight and you'd probably cut your arms up. Anyway, so I'll spin you around and I'll show you the amplifier because I can get up underneath the dash with the phone here. So right there, that's the amplifier. And it's fastened, uh, you can see one of the bolts on the left there. It's just a nut. And it's fastened into the same bracket that the uh, that kick panel is on that they put inside to protect it and there's the plug for it right there so you could probably probe that in place without taking it down but i think you can get at these wires it might be tight i don't know yeah you were right there yeah you could probably probe it it would be tight it might be easier just to pull this panel right off anyway that's it that's the amplifier well now that we know what that amplifier is what's in the amplifier so in the amplifier, I'm in a little closer here, is that is actually where the transistor sits inside of there. And they put it inside the car to keep it protected from the heat and that kind of thing. So inside of that box, this box right here, with the three wires and the plug on it, is, like I said, the transistor itself. It's got a Zener diode, and you can see uh, the transistor and uh, 40 microfarad capacitor and a two microfarad capacitor and there's a green wire and a blue wire and a red with a white stripe wire so that is the amplifier okay we know where the amplifier is what's in the amplifier that's this section right here on the diagram and uh, what is this next piece well the next piece is it's a box by the battery and I'll show you where it is right here so there's the box right here, this cover. When you take the cover off, this is where this piece is. And it's a combination of, inside of that is the ballast resistors. And then there's a terminal block. They call it a tachometer block here, but it's really just a terminal block where you fasten all, all this together. And then there's a cold start relay inside of there. So what we'll do, we'll pull the cover off of this and we'll take a look at all the components in it. And right here, 
before we pull the cover off I'll just point out where this fuse is this is the fuse that uh, was just dirty it didn't it wasn't blown it was just dirty and I cleaned up the ends and put it back in and I cleaned the uh, the fuse holder as well inside and the car started right up so it could be as simple as that if you're having trouble with starting one of these things okay it's a 7 16 I'm using a 10 millimeter works just as well pull that off okay so 17 7 16 uh, taking it off already and this is just a fiber made of some sort of fiber bake light or something like that cover this was a good shape seems quite sturdy got a little vent hole in the end there all right set that aside and this is what's in here so right here is the ballast resistor right here so inside of the ballast resistor there's a 0.33 ohm there's two ballast resistors inside of this actually it's a point 3 3 ohm resistor up on the on the top and there's also a 0.43 ohm resistor in this so there's two resistors in this and there's also this block right here this is the terminal block this is where you hook your tachometer and stuff to to do diagnostic testing of this thing and right here is the cold start uh, relay so the cold start relay what it does and I believe in the book it says if it goes below, I might be wrong on the figures, but if the voltage while you're starting the car, trying to start the car, if the voltage drops below 10.5 volts, this cold start relay will send all the power right to the, uh, to the coil. It basically bypasses this whole setup. Well, it bypasses this ballast resistor setup. So now what else is on this system? Well, we've got a distributor right here. So the distributor is, it's an FE engine, so the distributor is where it is. And then also right here, we show the coil. And there's the coil. Now these coils, uh, I could be wrong about it, but I believe they're a little different than the standard coil. Uh, I couldn't find anywhere in the uh, book that says it's different, but it does show um, that it's internally grounded right here so that's something I don't know about that's something you would have to check uh, if you're replacing the system or trying to get it up and running or uh, rejuvenated or whatever you're doing with it is uh, make sure you have the right coil now uh, you can see that the posts are close together on this one so it, there is something different about it than the other ones where they're separated so that's the coil it does appear to be different, but again, I don't know for sure. I never, I haven't found any data on that coil. Something makes me want to believe it. It is a different coil than the standard coil or the, the conventional coil. So if you are trying to get yours up and going, make sure you have checked into that and make sure you have the right coil. Now the distributor, inside of the distributor, as far as I know, doesn't look any different. Um, the system runs a little different. So we have still have just points in there. Now I do know in the book on the specifications is that the dwell is uh, different. When you're setting the dwell for this distributor with the transistorized ignition, it's a different uh, dwell setting. It's, it's more, it's like 20 to 26 or something like that. I just forget. Anyway, if you have the book, you'll know. Another thing that you'll notice in here, you can barely see it, but something else that's missing in there, there's no condenser because we covered the condenser a while back with my little pointer and the condensers are found inside of the uh, switching device here that's the only place that there's any conden uh, condensers on this circuit is inside of this uh, transistor amplifier and there's one on each side and of course the diode separating them and also in there um, there's another resistor right inside there. I never mentioned it. It's a 5.6 ohm resistor that's inside that as well. Well, that's all the pieces of this. Uh, it's not super complicated in as far as components. Everything's under the hood, except for the amplifier. That's up under the dash. And the rest of the stuff, like I said, the coil is 
possibly different. I'm pretty sure it likely is. Just the way it's laid out here, it doesn't look like a typical coil to me. And the, the, the terminals on that coil are in a different place. And another thing to remember that there's no condenser inside the distributor. The condenser is out here. It's in the amplifier up under the dash, sorry. And there's two of them in there. And if you have one of these and you're having trouble with it, it won't start, no fire at all. Check that fuse because that's all it was on for me was that stupid little fuse. Anyway, uh, I'll just do a quick shot of how the forge description of it. So it starts down here, right there. You can pause at any moment and take a read of that if you want. And that's it there. I'll get it in a good spot. And you can take a pause again of the screen and take your time to read the whole thing. Yeah, so there's likely a lot of, uh, you know, there's lots of diagnostic uh, testing tools that you can use in the book, which tells you how to test everything. Uh, and I think you can pretty much do it with a multimeter. You don't need all the scanners and stuff. Most of the modern multimeters will give you everything you need to know there. Permatuned by Ford. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to li like and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.